The comments and demos presented in this training apply to Autodesk Smoke 2013, pre-release trial one. This software is in active development, so screens and functions will change over time. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to session five, editing and timeline navigation. In this session, I want to show you how to edit a clip to the timeline, how to monitor and adjust audio levels, how to navigate in the timeline, how to add, patch, and target tracks, how to work with synced clips, and how to move clips around inside the timeline. By the way, Smoke automatically saves your work. It saves it every three minutes when the mouse isn't moving, every 15 minutes whether the mouse is moving or not, and it also auto-saves when you quit the application. Although you can change these settings in Smoke's preferences, there's no way to force Smoke to save your project at a specific time. So let me show you how to edit clips to the timeline and navigate within the timeline. So let's go back and create a new sequence. Smoke remembers all of our existing settings, so if nothing changes, all we have to do is click Create. I'm going to make sure that I set this to two tracks, stereo, click Create, and there's our new sequence. We now have two video tracks, notice V1.1 and V1.2. We can move up and down by grabbing this scrolling thingy here, move up and down so we can see different tracks. Notice there's two tracks clumped at one time. That means I've got a stereo pair and a stereo pair. I want to delete the second audio track so I now have two video tracks and a stereo pair. Okay, now let's, let's load a clip. Click on Dr. Surf. We've got an in, we've got an out, we're ready to edit. So, how do we edit? Well, you go over here, see these three symbols? This allows us to do an insert edit, allows us to do an overwrite edit, allows us to do a replace edit. These are exactly the same as the tools we've worked with in Final Cut or Premiere. They do inserts and overwrites the way we expect. Well, I'm ready to go. I've got, well, I'm almost ready to go. I've got two video tracks here. How do I know which track my video is going to edit to? Well, you see this red P here? That indicates it's the primary track. We can see the patch. That number on the left represents the video in the, the source or the viewer. The number on the right represents the timeline track. So the video is going to be patched from the source monitor to the second track. I don't want it on the second track. I want it on the first track. How do I determine my track patching? Well, there's a dull and boring way, and then there's a very cool way. Here's the dull and boring way. Click in this checkbox. Notice the red P jumps down. Whichever track you click on that's got the red P, that's where your video is going to edit. It stands for primary track. All right, well, that works. Notice the patching properly moves back and forth. All right, that's just way too exciting. I can't stand it. Here's the cool part. See this little focus slider here? Drag the focus slider up and down, and you can change the patching for the track. The reason this is so cool is let's say you're in the middle of a gigantic timeline. You don't have to drag all the way over to the track header on the left. Just grab this focus thingy on the, on the playhead, drag it up and down. <laughs> Done. All right, so we've got our our video patched. Now we're all set to go. Watch this. We're going to click here. Click, the, by the way, F9, F10, F11. Pfft, why is that a surprise? Click F10 or press this and... Wait a minute. My video edited. I'm going to grab the playhead, just drag this back and forth. My video edited, but how come my audio didn't edit? Hmm. Remember I said that Smoke does not support putting a mono clip and a stereo pair or a stereo clip and a mono pair. Well, what have I got here? I've got a stereo pair. What's up here? Right, dual channel mono. <sighs> We've got to add another audio track. Now, the way we do that is you go down to the gear menu, new audio track mono. And there's my mono track, except I need two of them. So click the gear, new audio track mono. And now I've got two mono tracks. You can see they're separated, whereas the stereo pair is all in a single icon. But there's no patch. How do we set the patch for audio? There's no red primary button. See this green box right there? Click and hold in the green box and drag your mouse back and forth. I'm just holding the mouse button down and dragging. Notice it's switching from audio track one to audio track two. You change the patching by click, hold, and dragging in that box, 
and when you do, it changes the patch to whatever represents the audio inside here. If you don't see a number, you don't have audio connected. That's the giveaway to say, oh, you've got a stereo pair that's trying to go to a mono track, or you've got a mono track that's trying to go to a stereo track. If this is empty, no audio will edit. And the way you set patches is to create either, using the gear menu, either a stereo pair or a mono pair to get your audio edited down. Let's hit the home key to get our playhead back to the beginning of the timeline. Click the overwrite button, and there is our audio, and there is our video. This is great. Press the up arrow key to move to the beginning of the clip, the down arrow key to move to the end of the clip. Now I want to monitor the audio. Hmm, there's no audio meters here. Well, there's actually some really sophisticated audio mixing inside Smoke, but it's not self-evident. We go up to this pop-up menu and we change it from source sequence, a two monitor display, to a single monitor display. See all this gray space to the left or the right? We're about to fill that. Now go over to the options menu over here on the right. Go down to show audio desk. This now gives me an eight track audio playback system. So as I play this, there's Dr. Surf's audio. We've got gain control and we've got muting control. This is all the standard audio control that you want. You can watch levels, etc., etc., but you can't set levels with this. How do we set levels? Well, I can click on a clip, click on effects, and that's the effects button right there. Click on gain and it shows the audio gain. Click, hold, and drag, and it's like dragging the red rubber band inside Final Cut or the yellow rubber band inside Premiere. Click, hold, and drag left and right, and I'm able to adjust the gain for the clip. This adjusts the audio gain for the entire clip by the same amount. If you want to set keyframes as you're playing through, click Auto Key. What Auto Key does is that turns on keyframes. Now, as you play your clip, we can change the levels during playback to make it sound good. So when auto key is turned off, you're setting the gain for the entire clip by the same amount. When auto key is turned on, as you drag the gain left or right, you're able to adjust the gain louder or softer throughout the course of the clip, and it sets keyframes that reflect what you're doing. This shows the playback gain of the clip to see the master gain, your main audio master. Go up to where it says Desk Inputs and click it. This is a toggle. It toggles between showing the output of your entire mix or the input of your entire mix. So Outputs and Inputs allows you to toggle back and forth. A slightly different display, but the ability to easily switch between looking at individual tracks and master out. By the way, see this line here, this white line? If you click, hold, and drag it, we can make this bigger. And as we make it bigger, look at what happens over there. This gives us gain and EQ and all kinds of additional controls, all part of the audio desk. If this just scares the socks off you, then pull the white line back up again, <laughs> and it's gone. By the way, the audio desk will always be there. So if I switch back to my two window display and then go back to the single window display, the audio desk will remain. So if you ever need to see it, it remembers the last position. You're looking at the outputs for the entire mix or you're looking at individual track inputs. Let's go back to our two monitor display. And let's pull this up just a bit so I can see more of my tracks. This is where having a really large monitor makes a difference because Smoke is a single monitor system. We've seen how we can control patching. We've seen how we can edit a clip to the timeline. It probably won't surprise you. Grab this if I drag the playhead farther along. Let's load Planet Earth. I'm going to pull the focus up to here. Let's see, get our Earth in space. And notice I've got an in, I've got an out. I don't want to edit any audio. There's no audio patching. It's video only. I've moved the focus up to the second track. Click the overwrite button. I can now grab a clip, drag it left and right. We're going to talk about trimming in the next session, so I'm going to skip that part for right now. But notice I can drag a clip to change its position. Let's edit another shot over right. Notice that this is a stereo pair. The stereo audio came with it. How do you edit video only without editing the audio? Go back to the patch panel. Just click 
And notice there's now a very small gap between these two tracks. This is exactly like Final Cut. If there's a gap between the tracks, they won't edit audio down. Let's just do a Command Z and undo this. So I'll highlight that, delete the clip, grab our playhead, put it where we want the clip to go. There's now a disconnect in the patch panel. Click the edit point, notice it's video only, or click video to separate it. Click the two audio tracks, delete the clip, drag our playhead where we want it to go, insert audio only. So this patch panel not only controls what track the audio and video is going to go on, it determines whether I'm doing video only or audio only, depending upon whether the patch is touching, which it is down here for the audio, or not touching, disconnected, which it is for the video. I've got this clip here. Notice that when I click on the clip, both the audio and the video are selected. That doesn't necessarily happen even though these are synced clips. Most of the time, you're just going to get the audio or the video to select. If you want to deal with a synced clip as a synced clip, go back down to the gear menu, see the group choice, and make sure that link selection is turned on. Its default setting is off. When link selection is off, even though these clips are synced, I can select the video or I can select the audio but I don't select the entire clip. Well, the problem here is it's very easy to knock your audio and video out of sync. See the red flag? It says it's 73 frames out of sync. Command Z to get that back. To prevent that problem and to make sure you're always working with audio and video in sync, click on the gear menu, go to group, and turn on link selection. Now, wherever you move one, they all move together. To pan left or right in a timeline, you can grab this and drag it left or right. To zoom in, drag up, this zooms in, or drag down, zooms back out again, which is very cool. I like that a lot. To move vertically, grab this bar, drag it up and down. Command Z automatically fills the timeline. Command plus zooms in, Command minus zooms out, Command plus, Command minus. If you need to add a new track, Go over to the track header, right mouse click, say new video track or new audio track. You can also delete the track or name a track. You now know how to name a sequence, how to load a clip, how to set the in, set the out. Remember the J key plays backwards, K stops, L plays forwards, or the space bar to play. Once you've reviewed the clip and you've got it set to go, put your playhead where you want the clip to edit. Up and down arrow keys move to the beginning or the end of a clip. Click this button or type F10 to do an overwrite edit. The patch panel determines whether you're editing audio, video, or both. But what we haven't talked about is how to trim these clips. We'll talk about trimming, transitions, titles, and effects in the next movie. With the exception of patching and targeting tracks, the process of editing is essentially the same as other editing applications. This familiarity, along with common keyboard shortcuts, enables you to edit quickly so you can concentrate on the final polishing of your images. My name is Larry Jordan, and thanks for watching.